Hey everybody. Uh, if you can't tell, we are gonna be dealing with some paint today. So our next media exploration is acrylic paint. Acryl, let's see, or Yeah, acrylic paint. <laughs> That's probably spelled right. Um, all right, so acrylic paint. Obviously, it is a type of paint. What you need for this to be a successful venture. One, already have all of your stuff drawn on your piece of paper. So pause your video, write this all down. Uh, do not try and do this while you are painting. You do not want to get like this clogged with paint. Um, so get any kind of drawing or surface thing that you're going to do done first. All right, cool, cool. Other things you're going to need. You're going to need actual paint. The main basic colors you can have are blue, yellow, red, black, and white. I only got these three because I don't need that much. You need some water in a jar or other cup. You need a selection of brushes usually, um, whatever works most appropriately with whatever you're working on. If you're going to be working on a gigantic wall, get paint brushes bigger than this, etc., so on and so forth. Um, you need a palette, of course, that has your paint in it. Um, I do suggest if you are in a classroom setting to get some like a kitchen kitchen wrap or saran wrap, whatever you want to call this, uh, to put over your palette. That way when it comes time to clean up, instead of having to go wash your palette really hard, you can just peel this off and throw it away. Uh, or if you need to keep this paint for the next day, you can put another layer of saran wrap on top and that will generally keep everything relatively wet until you need it again, um, as long as you only need to keep it for overnight or so. Um, so that will help you with cleanup. Other things that you might need, anything to protect your clothes, that would be aprons, etc. please get, um, or some kind of smock. If you need that to protect your clothes, do so. I suggest taking off things like rings if you are particularly messy. I am particularly messy, but I also do not care. Um, and usually some kind of napkin is a good idea to have as well. So make sure you have all of those things set up and prepared and ready to go before you get started because you don't want to have to stop in the middle to fix something. All right, so we are going to look at several different techniques to use with your acrylic paint. Um, the first thing is actually going to be this wash right here. Acrylic paint is nice in that oftentimes it is very dense and as soon as you paint it down, it tends to be opaque, which is not see-through. However, sometimes you do need it to be a little see-through or maybe you just don't need it to be as thick. And when you do a wash, what you're doing is you're essentially mixing some of your paint with a little bit of water in order to get a thinner version of your paint. So I'm gonna make a little red wash here. So I'm gonna take some, just a little bit. Also be aware, whenever I'm paint, uh, dipping my paintbrush into my paint, I'm only going about halfway up my bristles. If you start getting paint all up in this area right here, where next to this metal portion, it's really hard to wash out and you need to wash your brush well. So I'm gonna come over here, just start mixing some of this paint in with this water and you're gonna see that it thins out pretty well. And I'm gonna be left with something that's a little bit more like a pink, but that's okay. All right, so I've got this thinned out paint, very watery now. And I can use that in my little box and it's going to look a lot more like watercolor than acrylic paint, but that's okay. That's what I need. Sometimes I need to see what's going on underneath or maybe I just need to add a little bit of color or I want something to look more thin or wash-like or wet. Um, oftentimes a wash will do really well for that. You can also use washes to unify colors. If I had colors already underneath here and I did a wash on top, those colors will then become a little bit more similar by becoming a little bit more like the red each. And that can help unify colors. So if I paint a sky and it's blue and it's got some greens in it and maybe some yellows or something, um, and I want it to look more sunsetty, I might add a layer or a wash of orange over top, for example. Um, so a wash is very useful in a couple different contexts, um, but it's whenever you're thinning out your paint to paint with it, essentially. Usually it's also over a bigger area and not worrying about outlines as much. Blending. Blending is exactly what it sounds like. How do you get two colors to blend into one another well? So I'm going to take one color, I'm going to put it on this side, and I'm going to start working it in this direction. I still have a little bit of water in my paintbrush, so it's kind of thinning out a little bit. I'm not entirely happy with that. So I will dry that off my paintbrush really quick. I'm gonna try that again with, yeah, less, less thin that time. All right, so I'm gonna just bring this up until I get to a point where I no longer want it. Note, every time I switch colors, I gotta rinse my brush. It is very tempting to swirl, 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 and stir. Uh, what you gotta remember is that because my 
water doesn't come up very high onto my jar, that's okay. It's not gonna spill over. Uh, don't ever fill your jar more than about an inch and a half. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a lot of spilling. If your jar is too full, tapping on the bottom works just as well to clean your brush. Here's another place where not putting too much paint into your brush works well because it will not be as hard to clean. I just tapped it a couple times and it worked. All right, now I'm gonna grab my new color with a clean brush. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna start going the other way. Whee! Pressure will not help you. There is no way that scrubbing your brush harder against the paint, uh, against the paper is going to help blend it any smoother. It's just going to take a little bit of layering, especially with colors like yellow, which tend to mix kind of oddly. You also, if this isn't working entirely for you, you can also come in and mix your colors on your palette some in order for you to get a in-between transitional color. So if I mix these two together right here, I can get a green. And I can put that green here in the middle. Now again, all of this looks a little bit on the patchy side because I'm working very fast and I'm using a lot of water. So forgive that. And I'm just gonna work this back and forth a little bit till I have something that looks a little more smooth. All right, so I worked it a little bit more. I'm not taking too much time, so mine isn't perfectly smooth. Apologies for that in advance, but I basically have a somewhat smooth shift from blue through green and into yellow over here. The next one that we're gonna look at is impasto. Now, impasto is whenever you have very thick brush strokes on your paper. So your paint has a thickness to it. So you can see how I have that little drop just kind of hanging on right there on the side. Um, and if I put my paintbrush down, I will have a little lump of paint right there. And whenever I am painting an impasto, I will see a lot of those little lumps of, from my paintbrush on my surface because what I am painting, I'm going to have show my brush strokes. So it's usually short little strokes with a lot of paint on them, uh, so on and so forth. Or I'll have like the, the little points and tips from where I'm lifting my brush show up on the surface. So you can kind of see how that's a very bumpy surface right there. That is what impasto looks like. Now, with acrylics, you can have a couple different bodies of uh, paint or thicknesses of paint. Uh, a wash is whenever we thin it down really with water. This particular paint is not particularly heavy bodied. Heavy body has much more thickness to it and it's much easier to get an impasto look. So if your paints do this where they're not super thick um, and they don't like to show their brush strokes so much, don't worry about it. There are ways to solve that problem. If you have access to a medium, uh, medium, then mediums are like this will do different things to change the properties of your paint. This one in particular is a matte medium, meaning that it will, if you mix it with your paint, it will make it not shiny. But there's other mediums like slow dry mediums, which will make your paints dry slower, or gel mediums, which make them thicker, or gloss mediums, which make them shiny, iridescent mediums will make them sparkly, uh, so on and so forth. Lots of different mediums, they're just additives into your paint that will allow you to change its consistency. So if you have access to a gel medium, you can make thicker paint that's easier to use uh, to make impasto happen with. So, okay. All right, so I just finished this one off uh, screen a little bit. Uh, next, we're gonna look at Scraffito. Scraffito means to scratch. Um, I believe that's somewhere else on y'all's notes, but just in case, to scratch. It's Italian or something. We don't really know, because we don't. We're not foreign language class. A Scraffito technique is just where you're scratching through your paint, and you can work with a paint that's uh, has some background color other than white, um, but for the sake of fastness, speed, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to just put this blue on top of this white and have my white be my background color. Or I could let this dry and do a different color on top and have that, my blue, be my background color. All right, so I need to scratch through some kind of design into my surface. This is good for any kind of sharp detail that you need. I'm going to use the back end of my paintbrush, but you can use things like, um, like the end of a clip, the corner of your ID, pretty much anything that's stiff enough that it's not going to bend over. And you can 
scratch into the surface and you will see the color underneath. Uh, this does get a little bit of paint on the end of my paintbrush, so I do need to make sure to wipe it off. Otherwise, I'm gonna get that on me or my neighbor or my clothes or my backpack and that would be not fun. So there we go. All right, all right. So the last one that I had planned is additives. I have thought of one more, so I'm gonna show you all that in a little bit, uh, but we're gonna do this one next. Additives is whenever you take some material that is not paint and you mix it into your paint in order to get your paint to have a different texture. It's not really a proper medium of any kind. It's usually not liquid. Um, and a lot of different things can become additives. Um, generally, they're going to be a little bit stiffer or crunchy, um, or they'll be something a little bit strange. Uh, but in my particular example that I'm gonna be using today, I've got some pencil shavings. So I'm gonna add in some pencil shavings. Other ones that I've seen that are really popular are things like small pebbles, if you have particularly thick latex paint, or um, sand and things like that, something really gritty. I've seen coffee grounds and I think like fiber, like cotton fibers as well. They all end up making your paint have a different texture to them. Mixy mix with the stuff, it's looking really crunchy. Da 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 da. da, da, da. Dun, dun. Yeah, that looks about right. Looks like enough like a murder scene. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> All right, so one thing you have to be cognizant of with any kind of additive is that it is going to sometimes affect the drying time of your paint. Um, it will not look smooth generally. Uh, that is literally the, the idea and the point. Um, so be careful with it. Also make sure that you rinse your brushes really, really well after doing any kind of additive with your paint just to make sure that nothing sticks in those bristles and gets stuck there forever because then the brush will no longer be nice and smooth and we are all very sad beans. Um, so yeah, you can see that as I'm putting this all down, it has a very rough, rough texture because of the particular additive that I am using. I didn't mix quite enough to get all the way to the end, it looks like, oh well, it'll be fine. Um, but if I turn this to the side, you can perhaps see some of the crunchy, crunchy texture that I've got going on. Once it dries, I'll be able to feel this and touch it with my fingers and it will become a very interesting actual texture on my surface. All right, so the technique that I remembered uh, while I was halfway through with this little project was dry brush. Dry brush is a very interesting technique. Usually you do it over something more textured like the additive right here because it helps bring out the peaks of that or the impasto uh, because again, it helps bring out those areas right on the top. Um, and it is a technique where you use very, very little paint and usually you want a brush that has very stiff bristles. Like these are very hard bristles. These ones over here, super soft, nice and bendy. These ones right here, much stiffer. Uh, so I'm gonna use these ones right here. I'm not gonna put any water on this brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick just the very tip of my brush into some paint. And then I'm gonna take my pa uh, paper towel and I'm going to brush most of this off. So I have not very much left in my brush at all. And when I use it on my paper, what I should end up with is a very scratchy looking paint. Um, and so I can use this. And again, if I'm doing this just very lightly over the surface of something textured, like this right here, uh, I can get paint just on the very tops of the portions that stick up or stick out, uh, which helps accentuate all of the contours, curves, and bumps of my surface. And it can look very, very cool. Okay. All right, so cleanup is very important for brush care. So we're gonna talk about that really quick. Um, things like the paint water just goes down our sink. We have paint traps, meaning that the paint doesn't go all the way into the sewer system. It gets treated elsewhere and elseways. Um, so be very careful on using any kind of paint in sinks regularly that don't have such traps. I'm just gonna put a little bit of soap in the bottom. Normally I do this in my hand, but you know, location and all of that. So I'm gonna give these a good swirl in my soap and swirl on my palm. I'm trying to make sure that I don't have any colors coming out on these that I don't expect. Um, I want my water to run clear and I'm just using little circular motions. I'm not trying to stab these through my hand or anything. 
but by the time I'm done, I should be able to squeeze clear water out of the brush tips. And since I wasn't using these for very long and I was very careful not to get the paint too high, it was really easy to clean them just like that. Now, storage. It doesn't matter if they're in jars, in cups, in what. Here's how you want to store your paintbrushes. Hair in the air, tail in the pail. Do not put it the other way around. If you have your paintbrushes flipped the other way around, the bristles are going to get bent and sad and droopy and they will not go nicely the way that you want them to go. Um, so these can usually just sit out and dry wherever they need to go for your particular area, classroom, whatever. Mine are gonna go over there. And this, as I said earlier, normally I would wash it with soap and water, except since I had the foresight, I can just throw this away. Otherwise, this would get washed with soap and water and left to dry in whatever appropriate place is uh, present. 